Now, today we continue our coverage of RT correspondent Kalen Ford and photographer John Conway's arrest in Fort Benning, Georgia, this past weekend after covering the School of America's Watch, also known as the SOAW, the protest that they hold there every year. Now, most of the headlines of the other coverage reads Russian television network says that the TV crew was arrested by U.S. police. Well, they were in fact arrested. I mean, all the records in the video, they obviously prove this. But the more important question here is, is it getting more and more difficult for a journalist to do his or her job? Well, for more reaction, Alex Jones is talking to us from Austin, Texas. Alex, good to see you there. Uh, first of all, what do you make of what happened? And what does this say uh, for freedom of the press here? I mean, there seems to be no distinction uh, between journalists and activists uh, when it came to these arrests. Well, it's very frightening, and it's an attempt to chill free speech in this country. When I was at the RNC in New York uh, in 2004, uh, hundreds and hundreds of peaceful uh, reporters, even with major publications, uh, were arrested in huge drag nets and taken to an emergency FEMA center, uh, Pier 57, and held against their will uh, for days. And we've seen this expand with the free speech zones. I myself have been arrested as a member of the press. I've seen other press uh, arrested, and they do the same thing. They say, move away from this area, even though you have a right to be there in front of the gates. Then once you've moved to where they want you to go, they still go ahead and arrest you, uh, and they try to put very serious charges against people. And, and so that's why you don't see as many anti-war protesters or people on the streets of America, because the police have been caught uh, in, in, in Denver at the DNC, this was in the Denver Post, hiring police provocateurs to go out and cause violence and then use it as an excuse to attack the peaceful protesters. So this is part of an ongoing program to persecute protesters and the press. And now they're trying to pass legislation where the Justice Department can shut down any website they want without a judge or jury. So uh, tyranny is coming to the United States. But, you know, at this particular event, um, witnesses and other folks who were there um, say that the police were specifically targeting anybody uh, who was trying to film, anybody with a camera. So you got a camera, you're going to be taking, uh, taken away. Is this a growing trend? I mean, targeting members of the press? You mentioned activists, but when you're there as a journalist, you're there on assignment. You're there to cover an event, not Absolutely. be a part of it. No, no, absolutely. We know there have been cases now in at least four states where if someone's videotaping the police, whether it's a citizen or a professional media, where they're arresting local news, national news, they're walking hundreds of yards towards people with cameras and arresting them and then charging them with eavesdropping. Now, a federal court and a state court has ruled that it's not eavesdropping because you're in a public place, there's no perception of privacy. But yes, they are targeting the fourth of state, uh, the media, uh, because they don't want the media to be able to capture what really happened to the other demonstrators because they know the media uh, is a serious check and balance against government tyranny. I mean, I mean we know this from history. Any government that, that, that cracks down and tries to violate the press uh, is a government that does not have the people's best interest at heart. And it, it's, it's horrible to see a reporter arrested. And I noticed that she did even move when they told her to, even though she was on public property, not, not on the base. Uh, so this is just outrageous. Uh, and those police officers that did this at the behest of the military, they are stabbing our most cherished First Amendment in the heart. I mean, that's the First Amendment, the most important thing in our Bill of Rights. And, you know, the other side to this, and I have to mention this, I spoke to journalist and author David Lindorf yesterday, and he wrote a really interesting article about the fact that now more than ever, you actually have police coming to certain protests and filming the people, so sort of turning the tables, yes. sometimes outright, sometimes undercover. Um, why are they doing this? Because they say that they're not trying to intimidate anybody, but they're sending these files somewhere. I mean, where, where are they sending them? Well, they're going to the threat fusion centers that are federalizing local communities. They admit they have the CIA in the local police departments, which is still a violation of federal law. It is a chilling effect. They come out and they videotape you, but then when you videotape them, they come and arrest you. So they're putting people in files. Uh, that's admitted. Uh, we have a secret police in this country that... Uh, is beginning to eclipse what happened in East Germany uh, under the uh, feared uh, Stasi or during the worst days 
uh, that Alexander Shelzhenitsyn fought in Russia with the NKVD. I mean, this is classical tyranny, and, and this is an attempt to intimidate speech, and people need to stand up to Big Brother and say that we're not afraid, we know what you're doing is wrong, and we're going to keep this republic free, and it starts with the press. So people shouldn't be intimidated by the government surveillance. We're the good guys. We need to start surveilling them and covering what they're doing because we've got truth on our side. And Kalen also told me yesterday that there were uh, undercover cops posing as activists. They were holding uh, picket signs and they were sort of uh, part of the rally. So you have that aspect of it. You have the fact that the police are filming people. I mean, shouldn't there be more outrage about this? How come that aspect of it doesn't really make it uh, into the news? Well, because they want to keep people basically in the dark uh, that, that, that we have this political uh, you know, police unit, uh, commissars uh, here in the United States, and that at the events I've been at, including uh, at Fortune 500 many years ago in Austin, the police were dressed up like anarchists starting fights. And they've been caught in Canada, mainstream news, RNCP admits they've done it. They've been caught in Denver. They've been caught in Seattle in 99. They've been caught in Greece. This is something that a lot of governments do, but NATO countries, the United States, Canada, always do it and i would imagine if you study the rt footage you've got that you'll notice that the government provocateurs the police dressed up like activists i'll bet they were the most boisterous trying to stir people up because that's the modus operandi that's what we've seen over and over again is the ruling class trying to demonize infiltrate shut down demonstrators people exercising their free speech and their activism but also the media and the system sees rt as a threat and so that's why uh, they uh, clapped your reporter in irons, and that's why our corporate-controlled media tried to spin it like RT claims this happened, even though we all see the video and the police reports on record. And we know you're passionate about this issue. The always outspoken radio host Alex Jones live there for us in Texas. Thanks for having me.